Currently we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird, which is one of my favorite books, and I think it's a great book to teach this population of students. And one of my favorite quotes from this book is, uh, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb in his skin and walk around in it. And I think that's what it's all about. I think as a middle school teacher, it's all about empathy. Welcome back to Teaching Bilinguals, even if you're not one. I'm Sarah Vogel, a research assistant with the CUNY New York State Initiative on Emergent Bilinguals. Today I'm here at Ebbets Field Middle School, an exceptionally diverse school in Brooklyn, New York. On any given day, you can hear students speaking Haitian Creole, English, Spanish, Arabic, and two dialects of Fulani. Ms. Shireen Chapman Santiago is an eighth grade English teacher here. And she truly lives by that philosophy from To Kill a Mockingbird, that you have to know students well in order to teach them. But how can you truly crawl into your students' skin if you don't share their language practices? In this episode, we're going to find out how she does it. I think the quote really inspires me to dive deep and understand who the student is, and not just, you know, a name on a roster, but who is that person and build a relationship. Let's get into Ms. Chapman Santiago's tips for building relationships with her bilingual students. Tip one, Ms. Chapman Santiago is a keen observer of her students' expressions and behavior. First and foremost, cues, body language. When you give them something and they're just like, they delve into it or they kind of just like look around. So that's, I always look at those things. I feel like I'm a mother first, right? So I'm very in tune to their emotions because they are teenagers and they're very dramatic. And so when they come in with that face, I'm not gonna continue with the lesson. I'll direct the students to do something and I'll pull them out in the hall and have a conversation. If we don't speak the same language, I'll pull out my phone, I'll type the question, give it to them, they'll respond. And I've literally had conversations like that and uncovered some really deep and personal things that actually helped me um, deal with the students accordingly. Tip two, when it comes to academics, Ms. Chapman Santiago provides opportunities for students to show what they know using home language practices. That way, she can see their strengths and their challenges. The starting points vary from child to child. So even if you have three kids from Yemen, one may have had like some um, very advanced education, some may not because they're from the rural part. Those that are more proficient have an easier time making the transition from from their language to English, while those maybe with uh, formally interrupted education may need more interventions. I don't know the languages of the room, but I look at their work and I can infer where they are and modify accordingly. If I gave her the prompt in Arabic and she only wrote two lines, then I start wondering, is she proficient in Arabic? And then I'll compare it to her, her counterpart who will have a full page and then I'm like, hmm. You know, maybe I'll need to give her a little sentence starter or a little bit more background. In the beginning of the year, January, she started out with just two lines. And then what do we see kind of later in the year with your supports? She's sort of writing so, more so she's in still, Arabic. So she's writing more in Arabic, but um, it's half a page now. And then she's now attempting to write in English. And even though it's two lines, it's a victory for me. But today's entry was awesome. Where is it? It says, I wear my hijab, um, I don't know with what that's like. With my said. Islamic clothes. With my Islamic clothes, which makes me glamorous. And I was just like, yes, you are glamorous. <laughs> Tip three. Based on her observations, Ms. Chapman Santiago creates scaffolds that draw on students' home language practices. Students who are literate in home languages benefit from translated copies of texts and prompts, like this exit slip. While students complete this assignment, they can talk to a partner using whatever language they'd like to ensure they understand what's being asked of them. In the end, they must answer the question in English so Ms. Chapman can see how they progress on specific language objectives. You know, Google Translate is always open. And then where I can, I have students also help. Um, and I'll send things home to like older sisters or mom, you know, parents um, for feedback and is this right? And, but it is a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. It's a lot of work but it's necessary if you want everybody to succeed. To recap, Ms. Chapman Santiago uses clues beyond language to help her understand her students. She makes careful inferences from students' home language practices, even if she doesn't always understand what they say or write. Ms. Chapman Santiago welcomes all kinds of language expression in her class and provides resources in home languages to students who she knows will benefit from them. Ms. Chapman Santiago demonstrates you can teach bilinguals even if you're not one. Join us next time.